On the night of October 7, an attack was made on the sea oil terminal in Feodosia, Crimea. As a result of the strike by Ukrainian drones, an explosion and a strong fire occurred in the terminal. The Ukrainian headquarters confirmed the information and took responsibility. It is said that there were no victims during the incident. The so-called authorities confirmed the incident but claimed it was a fire. Later, the Telegram channel ASTRA clarified that the oil depot on fire in Feodosia is the joint stock company Marine Oil Terminal, which drones had previously targeted. In March 2024, four drones struck the depot, damaging the main fuel pipeline and causing a fire. Workers were evacuated then, and it took an hour and a half to extinguish the blaze. The terminal in Feodosia is considered the largest terminal in Crimea and plays a major role in supplying fuel to the Russian military. There are only two such terminals on the peninsula, one in Sevastopol. Все то взрывается. Взрывы попали все-таки в нефтебазу. Капец. Пожарище там. Вот уроды, а. Такие взрывы попали все-таки в нефтебазу. Пожалуйста, там. The Ukrainian armed forces killed six North Korean army officers during an attack on the occupied territory of Donetsk Oblast on October the 3rd, Kyiv Post reported, citing its intelligence sources. More than 20 servicemen were killed in a missile strike on October the 3rd on Russian-occupied territory near Donetsk, including six officers from North Korea who had arrived for talks with their Russian counterparts, the statement said. It is noted that three more North Korean servicemen were injured. It is claimed that before the missile strike by the Ukrainian armed forces, the Russians allegedly demonstrated to their colleagues
from the North Korea how soldiers were preparing for assault operations. Last year, Ukraine's main intelligence directorate reported the arrival of a limited contingent of servicemen from North Korea to the temporarily occupied territory of Ukraine, including units of engineering troops indicating active cooperation between Russia and North Korea. The Center for National Resistance reported in September 2023 that Russia was planning to bring North Korean citizens to the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk for construction work. Moreover, Russian President Vladimir Putin, after meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in June of this year, persuaded his counterpart from Pyongyang to open diplomatic missions in Donetsk and Luhansk. The Center for National Resistance assessed that the North Koreans were invited to ensure the supply of labor in these regions as the Kremlin's war in Ukraine has resulted in a labor shortage throughout Russia and the occupied territories. Top Ukrainian defense officials and U.S. diplomats agree about one thing. North Korean arms deliveries to Russia are among the biggest threats to Kyiv's ability to defeat the Russian invasion. Lieutenant General Kirillo Budanov, the Ukrainian chief of military intelligence, has called the non-stop ammunition shipments from North Korea to Russian ports in the Far East a direct threat to the Ukrainian front lines thousands of miles to the west. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told the United Nations Security Council last month that addressing North Korean and Iranian arms deliveries to Russia could be the first priority for the UN body. And U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told lawmakers this spring that weapons from countries such as North Korea helped to keep Russia's war going. The denunciations of North Korean assistance for Moscow's war effort, which has been apparent for two years, have redoubled after the signing this summer of a rejuvenated Russia-North Korea defense pact.